Hi everyone. Um, I've been working on this project called Measure. Um, the basic idea is that we're collecting metrics to measure our impact, the, the impact of our projects um, from external sources. Um, this is useful for our own use and also for funders reports and things like that. Um, so external resources could be the number of views on a website or the number of downloads of software we've written or the number of retweets for uh, something we've communicated on Twitter. So these are the kind of things that we want to measure. Otherwise, it's quite difficult to understand how our projects um, are being used and talked about externally. Um, work which was done previously on this project, there was a proof of concept built um, later last year by Yotam. Um, it, it used uh, this concept of collectors to scrape data from external sources and it wrote them into a Google spreadsheet as the database. And then these were small graphs were visualized, it could visual, be made to visualize this data in the Google spreadsheets. Um, it was a little bit less than ideal, but, uh, um, but it showed that it was quite a useful concept. Um, frictionless data was used as a project um, uh, to, to sort of, as an example, to, to test this out. And I think that it was quite useful. Um, so we're creating a new version of measure. And instead of writing to Google Spreadsheets, it writes to a Postgres database. Um, I wanted to make the configuration files that define what projects want to measure, uh, what metrics they want to, to, um, to record. Uh, I want to make those config things a little easier. So that's one of the objectives. Um, and instead of using Google spreadsheets, graphs and charts to visualize it, we want to use Redash. Um, and Redash, as some of you know, is uh, an open source um, dashboard uh, type product which um, where we can it, it, we can define a data source uh, in our in this case our Postgres database and Redash can be configured to create dashboards with graphs and charts for pretty much whatever you can do in SQL you can visualize in Redash it's really useful not just for metrics it's, it's been useful in, on other projects as well where we want to have a look at our data uh, we've used it in uh, the Open Data Survey and um, I think Good Tables is, is using it as well. Um, so first, so this project used uh, the Data Package Pipelines library quite extensively, um, which has been developed by Adam and among others. This is super useful. And the idea is that it, at the start of a pipeline, you can, you can either um, uh, accept or create a data package and then each step of the data package each processor can manipulate the data package or its resources or its rows within resources uh, and then pass it down to the next processor until eventually you, you do something with that data package you can dump it either to a file or a zip or dump it into a database so this this using this tool set using this pipeline concept made the, uh, the task of creating this measure project much easier because there was already a framework in place for dealing with data. And already many tools uh, were already available through the uh, Frictionless Data Project to, to make use of this, uh, uh, to, uh, to make it easier for me to uh, manipulate data and write it to a database, for example. Um, a lot of, so a lot of the, the ideas like um, uh, a lot of the features we needed, like writing to a database at the end of the pipeline. This was, has already been achieved with, with um, the data package pipeline library. It, it, one of the processes which is bundled with the library already does this. So there was no special code written for this. It was just for free. So that was really, really useful. So the first thing that we need to do is define a pipeline and um, each project has a document has a, a configuration file called a source spec file. Um, and I'll try and show you the source spec file uh, that we used for. Um, uh, to do, I can switch the screen. Here we go. Can everybody see this file? I'm the size of it. I have a each ball. Cool. 
Um, this is, if, I hope people can see this. Um, this is this, as an example source spec file for the a frictionless data project. Um, so each, there are only really two sections in this file, the project name and the configuration. And in the configuration, it's split up into what I call themes. So the, the themes are social media or code packaging or code hosting, for example. Um, these themes, uh, they, they will correspond with each um, table that's created in the final database. So if external sources will end up sharing the same table, they end up with the same sort of, uh, uh, collecting the same sort of data, then it's likely that they're the same theme. So for example, Twitter and Facebook are within the same theme. Um, they, they both do, they both, we, we collect data on similar things for that, for those. So those themes will share same, the same pipeline. And similar with code packaging, NPM and PyPy, they both share the code packaging theme. Uh, so the idea is this gives us a, a, a list of things that we want to collect. So for Twitter, for example, we're collecting these three entities. We're collecting data about frictionless data uh, hashtag, the, uh, the data packages hashtag, and the OKFN Labs Twitter handle. And another example is GitHub. Uh, we want to collect some data about repositories. So uh, GitHub is one of our, is in the code hosting theme, and here's the list of repositories that, that we want to collect data for, for, for the frictionless data project. So there's quite a lot of, of repositories, um, but it's no problem to just add more or whatever, it's pretty simple. Um, so hopefully this configuration file is, you don't, it, it's quite easy to understand, and it's, um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's, it's also all documented in the readme for, um, uh, for the project. So each theme has a pipeline that's composed of processes. And ordinarily, you write these pipelines in a pipeline spec file, which is also written in YAML. So each project has a pipeline for social media, and each project would have a pipeline for co-packaging, et cetera, et cetera. So if there are more than one project, we need to write we need to have pipelines for several social media pipelines, for example. So if we had a, uh, the Global Open Data Index had a, a, a project file here, it would also need a social media pipeline. So it gets a bit repetitive to, to keep writing the same kind of pipelines over and over again. So instead of writing a pipeline spec document, we use a feature which comes with um, uh, the, the uh, data package pipelines library, which is generators. So generators can take can accept uh, a can accept actually this document, this source spec document, as its input, and then generate pipelines for us. So, if we quick look at what generator code looks like. Um, this is the code for the um, for the generator that's used for the measure project. Um, the main stuff happens in this generate pipeline method, and it accepts this source spec document as its input, uh, which is here. Um, and for each item that we, 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 we discover in its configuration, each theme, we add some steps. And it gets those steps from uh, the pipeline steps module. And then at the end of it, it yields uh, pipeline ID and pipeline detail. So it yields one of these pipelines. So let's have a look at the pipeline steps that we have available. This is again, it's, it's, it's basically a list of our themes. So for example, code, code hosting, uh, the code hosting theme, um, it, each, each pipeline steps module has this, uh, has this label and this method called, called add steps. And add steps just, just, just returns steps that it's, uh, that it's added to this steps input. Um, so the first thing that this process, this uh, pipeline does is uh, uh, it, mostly the first, so it's this list of processes, and mostly the, the first thing that a pipeline does is 
is scrape from an external source somewhere. And so in this case, the first thing it does for, for the GitHub is for each repository, it adds a GitHub resource. And this GitHub resource processor is uh, one that we've written for measure and it goes off, uses the GitHub API to fetch information about a single resource. So this is the first thing that, that happens within this particular pipeline. It's the data, uh, the data package is created and some resources are added to it. One resource for each repository uh, that we want to, to take measurements from in GitHub. And then the next, and then after that's finished, it, the next step in the pipeline is to concatenate those resources together into one resource with several rows. So it's now one resource with a row per repository. And then there's some other uh, uh, um, stuff that we want to do. We set the types for this, uh, for each column uh, within, the, uh, within the resource. Uh, so repository is a string, watches is an integer, stars, these are, these are the data, this is the data that we're collecting from, from the GitHub um, uh, resource. Um, and then some common things that we want to add to, to each table as well, like the project name, the timestamp for when this stuff was collected, and the unique ID. Uh, and then finally, the last step in this pipeline, the last processor is, is the, the uh, data package pipelines uh, processor um, dump to SQL and like I said this isn't something I had to write it was just kind of already there for free and um, it's we give it some information about uh, um, which which uh, database engine to use and which table to write to and uh, in this case we want to update row update rows which exist and we're going to update on these particular keys so that's fairly straightforward um, so each step within this add steps is a processor. So if we look at the processor for GitHub, which is the one which adds a GitHub resource, this is, this is the whole processor. It's quite straightforward. It starts with this call to the data package pipelines ingest method, and then it ends with this uh, call to spew, which so we accept we accept things from this data package pipeline this from the top and then we spew it back into the pipeline at the end so the first thing that it accepts is this, the parameters for this particular for this particular processor the data package itself and an iterator on the resources that uh, the, the data package deals with um, and then this the gut the guts of it on the inside on the inside of this processor just it, it, all it does is go off to the internet scrape the github api and um uh, uh pull down data about the particular repository that was defined in the parameters and then at the end spews it back out into the pipeline again so yeah that's fairly straightforward example because the github processor doesn't um uh, it doesn't uh gather any historical data so when this pipeline is run the processor only gets data about what the status of the repository is right now uh, so how many stars does it have right now how many watches does it have right now and then it writes that to the database for today's date so it doesn't gather any historical data because we can't really get it for, for GitHub, but it builds data day on day each time this pipeline is run. And the idea is that we run every pipeline once a day. But there are some processes which, uh, which can gather historical data. Um, I think that the uh, Node Package Manager processor can gather historical data and it's more complex, uh, uh, it's a more complex processor. But essentially, it's the same kind of idea. It takes it, it this is at the beginning of the, of the uh, processor, we gather, we, we get given the data package and a resource iterator, and at the end, we spew it back out so that the next processor can do things with it. So we can define the pipelines, and we can collect data. And each day, the pipeline is run, and that's again this uh, uh, this is something which 
I didn't have to create a scheduler for this. Um, Data package pipelines already just does this for us. It has the concept of scheduler. I think it uses Celery uh, to do this. Um, so I just use the uh, the, the scheduler um, uh, uh, static variable here, which gets um, added to the pipeline details. So when the pipeline is is uh, yielded from this generate pipeline, it comes with a with an instruction to run this once a day. And so that's just super simple. Uh, I added one line of code and it was running every day, which is really good. Um, so we host this project on, uh, on, um, on the Docker cloud. Um, and I'm just gonna find the dashboard for it because that's quite cool as well. So at measure.okfn.org, this is the pipeline status dashboard. So we can see what pipelines have been created and what pipelines are running. Um, so there's what four pipelines there um, corresponding to each theme for the friction status project. If we had Godi, for example, Godi project, we'd also have um, Godi, uh, Godi code hosting or something like that. Um, this is really useful. That this this view on what's happening with the pipelines is really easy to see that uh, that they're being run each day, and it provides a log as well of what happened during the last run. Um, and the source, which is uh, the uh, source spec document that I showed you previously, uh, and it also shows you the pipeline. So this is essentially what we would have written ourselves in YAML if we were writing the pipeline by hand. It's not quite the same, but it is similar. Um, so once we've collected data, the next thing is to view the data. Um, and like I said, we're using Redash to view the data, um, which can, so that the idea is that eventually each project will have its own dashboard uh, with uh, its own graphs and charts and it's collecting data in its own way. Um, and individually, we, we, if we are interested in a particular collection of data, we can create our own dashboards. So we're not limited to what's being given for a particular project. Um, hopefully you can see this. This is uh, an example of a chart created for the, the code packaging downloads. So this is uh, code packaging for from PyPy and um, the Node Package Manager um, over for since 2015. So it's, it's this is quite interesting. It shows kind of when uh, it gives an idea of the traction for our projects, I think, and you know when stuff starts to become interesting and people are using it, and uh, uh, like we can do these charts. This is all provided by Redash, and uh, these charts, like for example, we can look at just good tables, um, and that's quite interesting. I think. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's um, measure. Um, there's still stuff to do, which uh, including. Uh, um, we have one of the things that we collect are uh, contacts and uh, events that have taken place. So these aren't the, so the external source is actually our input into a form, uh, and that form is is uh, on Google Forms, uh, writing to a Google spreadsheet. So the processor we need to write processes for those to collect that data because that's that's quite interesting as well and to say we give a talk, it's interesting to, to uh, um, measure the impact of that talk, when that talk took place, and then the corresponding Twitter mentions, for example. Uh, so that's why we want to capture those sort of things. And that's it. Any questions? Hey, Brooke. Um... Hi. I I missed the the beginning of your talk, so I don't know if you talked about this, but how like do you do you test of the pipelines and and if so how how do they work, and and also what happens if for for any reason the the processor is delayed and does not run on schedule, do you sure. like backfill the dates or we just 
might lose the data for their days. Sure. So yeah, that one of the objectives of the um, of the project was better tests. Um, we had some tests in the proof of concept, but it's quite difficult to write tests for the, for, for these processes um, because they run um, uh, they run in their own process. Uh, so one of the things that I did during this project was to to write some helper uh, a sort of helper function for data package process for the data package pipelines library to um, to help test individual processes um, and. I'll show you briefly uh, what that kind of does or what, where we actually sort of run the tests. Um, so if I look at an individual processor and like we were looking at the GitHub processor, uh, well actually we can look at a really simple processor, this is, no, we can't, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, we look at the GitHub processor. I I only really want to to, te to test this code in the middle of the, of the, um, of the module. I don't want to test uh, um, the scheduler. I don't want to test all the stuff which basically data package pipelines should already be testing. I only want to test my stuff, uh, the kind of logic from that we that we've written the new stuff. So I want to test what is happening, but in between ingest and before spew. And so I want to mock up what gets returned by ingest, and I want to be able to then test what gets returned when I spew. Um, so that was what I wrote for the data package pipelines library in as a test uh, do, do, do. we got a really simple test don't I? Uh, not really sort of maybe uh, so this this is one of the tests which um, uh, the idea is that I could run the processor with a really predictable uh, um, tuplet that gets returned from ingest. So my input is predictable, and then I test what the output is. So that's, yeah, that's what we get for tests. Um, and then you asked about, uh, what was it? Oh yeah, what happens if it doesn't get run? Um, for some processes like the GitHub processor, that's difficult. Um, you, basically, we just we end up losing those days. So if it doesn't get run for a week, we don't get information for that week. Um, but for most, uh, many of the processes, maybe most of them, uh, they will backfill. So they'll they actually look at the, the uh, what the latest date is, the latest uh, row of information is from the database. Um, and then use that as the start date. They, they see when that when that was uh, retrieved, and then and then use that as the start date for the next batch of uh, of collecting data. So it will backfill. Um, so yeah, no package manager will. Uh, PyPy will. Uh, that's why we have all that data uh, about the about the co-packaging stuff from all that historic data because it just backfilled, uh, which is quite nice. Cool. Thanks. Hey, Brooke. Um, hey. I just have a very quick question, and I probably won't be able to hang around for the answer because I need to start <laughs> the all hands soon. But um, less about measure. And by the way, it's just amazing. It was great to hear and um, to see how this has matured from the original version. Um, my question was actually because I haven't been writing Python 3.5 or 3.6, and I saw some interesting things here, like function annotations. So, and and function annotations, and also like yield from. So, I just think they'd be really cool things for you and Adam and anyone else who's been writing Python 3.5 and 3.6 to talk with us about. And 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 my my more direct question is. Um, I don't really know what the handling is of, say, function annotations. So, like, I saw in your add steps code, it looks like you're um, declaring that the response, like the return value, is a list. Is there a do? Yeah. Do we yeah. actually run additional um, checks to ensure that, or like, yeah, you know, it's just an open question. You won't be able to answer yeah. it now, but it'd be really cool to to dive into that with the team. It is interesting. It's the first time I've used this annotation. Um, the reason I used it for this for this pipeline steps particularly is in the hope that at some point there will be validation for it. That at the moment when you when you run the code, it doesn't really validate. I don't think it validates. I'm not, I don't think it does. Um, but because of the way I wrote the generator, 
um, you don't have to re really register these 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 pipeline steps anywhere. The generator will discover the, the, each of the steps for each thing. If it's in the pipelines directory, uh, it'll just discover it. Um, and if it's got this, if it's got the, a label corresponding with the uh, uh, with the declaration which is used in the in the configuration file, um, and so that means that you sort of anybody can kind of write the uh, write one of these themes uh, uh, to add steps to, to the pipeline, and so I wanted it to sort of act a bit like a contract or a, a um, uh, like a signature, um, an interface, so that it so that it's um, this is what it should look like. That it should have this label, and it should have these steps, and this step should be a list, and this pipeline ID should be a string, and it should return a list. It, you know, that these. This is the way that you would write a pipeline steps module, um, and I think that this helps people who will come after me to understand how to add to this project. That's why I did the annotations, partly in the hope that it will automatically validate it, and also partly in the hope that um, it acts like documentation. Uh, yeah, yield is really interesting. Um, I won't go into it because we're running out of time. Um, the particularly data package pipelines makes a lot of use of, of, of yielding because of the uh, of the streaming nature of the of the uh, of the way that processes and pipelines work. Um, I learned quite a lot about how to do that on this project, um, so it is definitely worth pretty much talking its own right. Excellent, thanks, bro. I'm going to drop now, so I'll speak to you, so I can go kick off the other call. Thanks, cool. bro.